I feel like every few years the internet reminds itself that nepotism babies exist and they get really angry about it. Which honestly at this point, I feel like it's pretty understandable. Like it's impossible at this point to Google any up and coming famous person right now and not realize that their parents' names are highlighted in blue on Wikipedia. And we all know what that means. Since we seem to be in the middle of another nepotism baby discussion though, I've been thinking these past few weeks on how I can join in on the conversation in a smart, meaningful way. Then I realized I'd rather rank them. I want to pit the nepos against each other. I want drama, carnage, maybe even a reverse Hunger Games. I'm not stingy. We have a lot of people to rank today though. Like I think this might be one of the biggest we've ever done, which I guess when you think about it, there being that many nepotism babies is a curse, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of a blessing in disguise because now they have to start fighting each other in those audition rooms. Like it's not just the normies. All I'm trying to say is that maybe there is a sense of balance in the world if the best of Meryl Streep can do for her daughter, is a bootleg version of Grey's Anatomy, which also happens to be the exact same career trajectory as Dixie D'Amelio. But guys, look at all the women we're ranking today though. I am so proud to say that 83% of the nepotism babies we're ranking today are white women. Give it up for Hollywood, guys. Look at that progress. It's like a sea of privileged mayonnaise. Don't you wanna slather that on your, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right there. Before we get into the ranking though, I did wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Audible. Audible's a leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. They've got everything from bestsellers, to new releases, tons of different genres to choose from, and they now even host podcasts. I've really gone into audiobooks in the past few years just cause it's allowed me to read during the times that I previously couldn't. So whether that's when I'm walking my dog or I'm doing chores, I can now listen to books the same way I would a podcast or a video. It's definitely made a massive difference in the amount of books I'm able to read every year. I almost doubled my Goodreads goal from last year, but I'm not like a huge stickler for those goals. It's more so when you have a massive TBR, it's gratifying to see that you're actually able to read all the books you've been wanting to. Audible's also recently launched Audible Plus, where with the membership, you can get full access to their Plus catalog, which has thousands of select originals, audiobooks, podcasts, and even ad-free versions of popular shows and exclusive series. And they even have guided meditations in there too, which, I have tried and I think they're pretty good. And what's also nice is that you can download or stream without any limit because you can listen to everything offline too. I actually just started Things Have Gone Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. I'm not too far into it, so I'm just gonna read a bit of the summary, but it's about two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s, a darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to their most horrific desires. Like, what are those desires? I think this is gonna be really good. It's definitely kind of reminding me of the vibe of like Bunny or the Pisces. Like you go into it with expectations, then you're actually reading it and you're like, this is crazy. So I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna be really good. If that isn't your thing though, don't worry. Audible has thousands of different titles to choose from. So you're bound to find something you wanna check out. So if you wanna give it a try, you can go to audible.com slash Yonzo or text Casey Yonzo to 500-500 to start your free 30 day trial. That's audible.com slash Yonzo or text Casey Yonzo to 500-500 to start your free 30 day trial with Audible. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring. Definitely check it out in the description box if you're interested, but Otherwise, let's get back into the ranking. If you've been here before, you know we can't do a ranking video unless we name the tiers because I'm high maintenance. The first tier is the calls coming from inside the house. This tier is for the nepos who wanna act like they're not nepos. In fact, they work just as hard as you do to get the opportunities that would have fallen directly into their lap, whether they actually tried or not, but the difference is that they actually tried, okay? So you should feel bad for them and also work for only 15 cents an hour because apparently no one these days wants to get up off their fucking ass and work. That's have to, so true. I can't imagine why. Next we have Fork Spotted in the Kitchen. This is just for like the snooze central nepotism babies. And by that, I just mean that they're very predictable. Like your parents were famous actors and now you're an actor. Fork Spotted in the Kitchen. We're not that surprised. Next we have the Camp I Don't Care tier. This is for the crazy nepotism babies, okay? Like so crazy that I'm gonna overlook every ridiculous thing they've ever done because I'm just in awe of how their brain works. There is someone I'm thinking of specifically for this tier. I'm not saying who it is yet though. After that, we have the come on queen, you've got this tier, which is based on this tweet, which you might think is stupid. But when I look at this tweet, I see hope, resilience, a square of frozen mac and cheese in a naked frying pan, but it's about the energy, okay? This tier is for the nepotism babies that I'm rooting for, okay? If you're in this tier, you are the mac and cheese and I'm the frying pan trying to make this shit work. Because despite your nepotism, I believe in you. The final tier for this video is the snap snap kirby.mp4 one. This does involve some required reading or viewing, if you will. Oh, I just love it. I love the camera so, so much. And the camera loves me. I did make this at four in the morning, and laughed at it while Luke for a good 10 minutes straight. Do I think it's that funny in hindsight though? No. He's wearing high heels. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? 
Regardless, I think this just perfectly encapsulates nepotism babies that are doing everything right. Like they're taking every advantage they've been given in life and they're working like Kirby's working that Trunway in those high heels. Let's get into the actual ranking though. Willow and Jaden Smith, who are obviously the children of Jaden and Will Smith. Both of them have singing careers. I am biased towards one of them. Like, I'm sorry, but you can't drop 2010 pop trash perfection and expect me to forget about it. You had to be there. Today though, obviously Jaden puts out alternative hip hop music while Willow's leaning more into the punk genre. By the way, we're all collectively forgetting about a certain collab. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna remember it. I grouped them together to rank though because I honestly think they both belong in Snap Snap. Don't get me wrong. There's definitely a Machine Gun Kelly size bump in the road, but Nonetheless, the music's good. They always seem to turn a cool concept and you can tell they're passionate about it. What more can you want? All right, Bella and Gigi Hadid. They're both the daughters of Mohammed and Yolanda Hadid. Yolanda's most well known for being a former model and on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, as well as a very strong advocate for almonds. I'm feeling really weak. I have a couple of almonds, chew them really well. And Mohammed Hadid is best known as a real estate developer and professional Instagram hype man. He is a keyboard warrior, but I kind of love that for him. I'm sure we all know at this point that Gigi and Bella decided to take after their mom and both become models. This is where I'm gonna show my stupid a bit because I actually really like them both. I don't know what it is about them. I just feel like they're very self-aware or at least as self-aware as you can be when you're that famous. I was whipped for Gigi at one point. Like I bought her Maybelline palette because I wanted to support her as if she was like a small business and not a multi-millionaire model. Like girl, get the fuck up, this is embarrassing. And I like Bella too, okay? Sue me, she's given the internet great material. What more do you want from me? If homeboy comes through with the Hadids, Homeboy's gonna get Snap Snap Kirby tier. It's quiet, yeah, no, right. it's quiet for him. Kendall Jenner, offspring of the Kardashian machine, model. <laughs> a lot of people online have an issue with her talent for modeling. I know jack shit about that industry, so I'm just gonna sit this one out. But I think the more accessible reason a lot of people have an issue with her is because she seems very determined to make everyone feel bad for her all of the time. Which listen, I'm not gonna sit here and try to say that she has no struggles in her life. I think that everybody, regardless of the privilege they have, have some struggle. But I feel like the second that you're trying to prove to somebody that you work really hard or you have a lot of problems, you've already lost. Like, why are you even bothering? So because of that, I feel like she belongs in calls coming from inside the house. The next tempo we're ranking is a little bit special because it's YouTube YouTube's first nepotism baby, which would be Olivia Jade. Feels like just yesterday that we were seeing her luxury Christmas hauls. They grow up and go to jail so fast. It's Olivia Jade. If you didn't know, Olivia Jade is the daughter of actress Lori Loughlin and designer Massimo Giannulli. And I know what she did was really bad, but just hear me out for a second. If we can separate all of that shit from this, just for a second. This photo is camp, borderline high performance art actually. I just don't think it's physically possible for her to look more out of place on a machine that she's trying to claim she spends all of her time on. Like to me, these are the same photo, but the difference is that she tried to use this to scam a university and it almost worked. And because of that, I put her in camp. All right, where are we gonna put Miss Kylie Jenner? I will say every year without fail, she gives us a little meme material as a treat. And I think that's beautiful. It's like our own little annual Kylie Jenner ration. Like, yeah, I know I scam you guys a lot, but look, is that a chicken? I think I'm gonna put her in fork spot in the kitchen though. Cause I feel like at this point, all of those sisters are doing the exact same thing as each other, which I mean, I get it, it's working. So like, why stop? But I don't know, it just feels like they're all mingling the same cutlery drawer and it's kind of boring. Next we have Haley Baldwin, who is the daughter of Stephen Baldwin and the niece of Alec Baldwin. She doesn't really do much apart from being a punching bag for Selena Gomez fans. So there isn't really that much to say. Work definitely spotted in the kitchen though. I oddly respect a nepotism baby that just doesn't do anything because they don't have to. Then again, mothering Justin Bieber does sound like a full-time job. Paris Hilton, of course, gets her nepotism from being the great granddaughter of the founder of the Hilton Hotel. I know I talked about this in a video before. I just can't remember which one, but I really like her work ethic. She's just constantly got a shit ton of stuff going on. Like she has tons of perfumes, a DJ career, a YouTube channel, and she's just very dedicated to staying in the public eye, even if that means she has to hang out with crusty YouTubers to do it. She's clearly a hustler. And I feel like that's really rare to see with nepotism babies. But about that metaverse phase we seem to be going through right now. I'm so excited that you're all here to celebrate my favorite party in the metaverse. This is the sketchiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like I'm pretty confident I would get robbed here, but like specifically by the phantom virus from Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase. Apparently this was supposed to be a Coachella Roblox party called Paris World, but I mean, from what I heard, it could also doubles the simulation of this year's Revolve Festival, so. Two for one. She definitely belongs in Come On Queen, you've got this though. Like we just need her to drop the NFTs in the metaverse shit, 
get Hulu to set up some sort of like simple life reboot and we're good. I think Maude Apatow is also another fork spot in the kitchen. She's the daughter of actress Leslie Mann and director slash producer Judd Apatow. But you probably already know her from Euphoria as Lexi or maybe even Sadie from This Is 40. Chosun told me that you flipped out on him and his mom and you guys are nuts and I agree. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that rent, phone bill, and groceries were paid in advance. Nothing was due that month. Brooklyn Beckham is next, and by no means are his parents the most rich or famous out of everyone we're ranking, but I think he displays one of the purest forms of nepotism. In the way that an average person, if they suddenly got into painting, might get a bit trigger happy and buy a shit ton of paint that they end up not using because maybe after a few weeks you just kind of get bored of it, versus with Brooklyn, because of his nepotism, he's able to turn his sudden passion for cooking during the pandemic into a Today Show segment where he shows people how to assemble a breakfast sandwich. Um, and then when the mm. bacon is cooked, Mm -hmm. I put it on a paper towel. Yeah. Um, okay. It feels like they're watching a child doing something super simple, but you're pretending it's really impressive because it's a kid, except for the fact that this is a 23 year old man. Like it's so bad that the host can't even pretend to be interested anymore. You know what I was just wondering? Who has more tattoos, you or Carson? Like why did nobody bring up his photography book? Does he know he has a photography book? Actually, now that I'm thinking about that, maybe that was intentional. I think my favorite part about this clip though, beyond obviously how painfully awkward it is, are the chef's tips that keep popping up on screen that include cooking gems like crack the egg on a flat surface. Yeah, guys, don't forget, if you wanna cook an egg, you have to crack it so that the egg actually leaves the shell and ends up on the pan in the first place. It's a uh, really important stuff. Yeah, I feel like they really need to drive that point home to the Today Show's mid-afternoon audience of stay-at-home mothers. I think the only thing that could be more ridiculous than the segment itself would be watching his agent actually trying to set this up with a straight face. Broken's got quite the knack for cooking and we'd love to have him on your show. Well, that's great. What kind of dish did you have in mind? Well, we were thinking either his bacon and egg sandwich or he could just put a bag of popcorn in the microwave and we could go from there. Does he have anything else we could? No. Okay, uh, sounds great. We'll have him on Thursday. For the ranking, I think he definitely belongs in Fork Spot in the kitchen, but he also needs to get out of the kitchen. Now, I know some of you guys might hear the name Emma Roberts and immediately think, okay, she's the niece of Julia Roberts. She's gotta be landing in Fork Spot in the kitchen, but you would be wrong. Emma Roberts has given us classics like Wild Child, Scream Queens, Aquamarine, Little Italy. Where's her Oscar? I admire her though. Cause I would also be in a terrible movie if it meant I could start opposite of a guy I had a massive crush on in the fourth grade. Can you knock her for that? I don't think you can. She plays such a good bitch though. Like I know that she's in her rom-com bag right now, but I am begging someone to just let her play a bitch. If you need a victim, I'll be the victim. Do a biopic on Abby Lee Miller for all I care. Just. Someone needs to figure this out. Just make sure it's not Ryan Murphy. Next we have Cara Delevingne, who's known as a model, a Met Gala nightmare, a not very good actress. Miss Peg the Patriarchy happens to come from, allow me to quote here, London's best connected high society family full of a long line of debutantes, party boys, and millionaires. Uh, yeah, the call's coming from inside the castle, Kara. I'm not done with this Met Gala look though, because whatever this is, this like Hassan pikerfication of social justice couture, we need to stop it because it's heinous and it reminds me of that girl that kept showing up to the Grammys. Before we get into this next ranking though, I have to be honest with you guys. I am a Gwyneth sympathizer. If Gwyneth has 100 fans, I'm one of them. If she has zero, it means I'm dead because there is no one who excuses that woman's crazy like I do. She's like a 100 man traveling circus in one person. It's amazing. I know everyone already thinks that she's weird, but I don't think that we appreciate enough the fact that she conducts Twitch streamer level antics as an A-list celebrity. Like she forgets which Marvel movie she stars in because she's too busy recommending people buy a $20,000 gold dildo or getting fined for telling people to lay a $66 goop jade egg to balance their hormones. She's telling people to lay an egg for God's sake. That's mother. It is absolutely ridiculous and I love every second of it. It's camp, I don't care. This tier was made for her. Jake Gyllenhaal is also yet another fork spot in the kitchen. He's definitely a good actor and he's been in good movies, don't get me wrong, but both of your parents are directors. How else was this gonna pan out? Okay, next we have Kate Hudson, who's the daughter of Goldie Hawn. And I know technically I should be putting her in fork spot in the kitchen because she was an actress like her mom, but I'm biased and I make the rules. Like I just can't put her in there. She gave us too many classic rom-coms. Oh, and she also has the athleisure line. She's like in her little girl boss era. You know what? Fuck it. I'm putting her in snap snap. Argue with the wall. Okay, the next person we're ranking is like a serious nepotism baby. Cause not only are Drew Barrymore's parents famous actors, but her grandparents were also famous actors. She's done a lot with it though. She had her successful acting career. She has a talk show now. She also has a makeup line. And she just seems so insanely nice. Yeah, I probably do have a parasocial relationship with Drew Barrymore. I know nothing about her. She knows nothing about me. 
It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I think she belongs in Snap Snap. All right, guys, we did it. We're on the final nepotism baby we're ranking today, which is Dakota Johnson. She's the daughter of Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson, who are both actors. And I know some of you guys are sitting there going, Casey, she's a famous actor. She should be going in four spot in the kitchen. She will not be. She's more than that, okay? To me. Just hear me out for a second here, okay? Dakota gave us That's Not True Ellen. She also gave us The Green Kitchen, the $200 white t-shirt while wearing $800 jeans to go buy $30 orange juice aesthetic. She's an untapped institution, which is why she belongs in Come On Queen, You've Got This. Like she's booked and busy, but I want her to be more booked and busy. I want a Dakota Johnson cinematic universe. That's our final ranking though. Let me know what you guys think. If you agree with it, if you don't, you can let me know who you would have placed differently in the comments. Also really quickly, with my last ranking video, a lot of you guys mentioned that there could have been more couples added. I'm definitely down to do a part two if you guys want me to. I'll put in the pinned comment an area where you guys can drop the couples I missed. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also follow me outside of YouTube. All the links will be on screen as well as in the pinned comment down below. I also have a second channel if you want to check out some smaller commentary videos. But otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Guys, he's hitting that Ariana high note. Yeah.